we found seven elements of reconciliation common to different cultures around the world. Um, and sometimes these are addressed directly, sometimes indirectly, and not definitely not in this order, necessarily. So these are elements of reconciliation. What if you're rehumanizing ourselves and each other? Um, this is a really basic concept of peace building, and it's very important because we're are more able to commit violence against those who we do not perceive as fully human. I saw this so strongly in Rwanda, right, where people were referred to as cockroaches. And also, once we commit violence, or once our country or people <coughs> commit violence against another, we become less able to perceive and acknowledge each, the other's full humanity. So this process of rehumanizing the other and at the same time, honestly, rehumanizing ourselves as well is really critical. The images here are of Hutu and Tutsi drummers in both Burundi and Rwanda, who, by drumming together, even during the worst times of violence, not during the genocide itself, but in Burundi, <coughs> during periods of high ethnic conflict, actually began to identify with each other as drummers and see themselves as drummers more than as Hutus and Tutsis and in many, many occasions saved each, other, saved each other's lives because of their experience of being together. And this dance here at the bottom is a reconciliation ritual dance that took place on the 10th anniversary of Rwanda's genocide. Next element of reconciliation, listening to stories, sharing stories, and increasing the complexity of the narratives that we tell about our lives. The image here is a hip hop cipher on the left. In a, a um, refugee camp where young Liberian men of opposing factions share rhymes and rhythms and develop friendships and relationships of support. Listening is one way that we signify our respect to others. It's also, so many conflicts are based just on misunderstanding and miscommunication. So the developing and nourishing the capacity to listen well is one of the key contributions I think that arts can make to peace building. Stories are a way that human beings unlike other species as far as we know. Human beings make meaning out of experience through stories. We signify what's important and the moral implications of our experiences in our lives. Composing really traumatic events into stories is one way that begins the process of healing. These are um, images also from Rayom Studio in Cambodia. Um, the theories of international relations and the psychodynamics of international relations tell us that when communities fail to mourn effectively and completely, they're more likely to try to recoup losses through violence. This isn't like just revisiting and um, you know, bothering and scratching a wound. It's actually like facing something and being able to move to the other side of it and to, have, to be able to hold it in a way that doesn't consume you. Um, so this project in the Rayum Institute for Art and Culture was part of it. These images come from an exhibition called Legacy of Absence, in which artists throughout the country were invited to address the legacy of the genocide. One of the key ideas that um, Darvuth taught us this, in this process was that indirectness can be really important. That in, by having an art exhibit, people could approach which images they wanted to. And that sometimes images were very abstract, but they created a space where people could begin to remember that which had been impossible to remember. And actually, in the case of this art exhibit, and also in plays that had been performed in Cambodia, it was after engaging with works of art that people, for the first time in sometimes in decades, began to be able to tell the stories of what they had experienced in the genocide. This is empathizing with the suffering of the other. So hugely challenging, especially in the aftermath of violence, especially when you believe that, and perhaps rightly, that the other side is what who has caused suffering to your people. Um, but all kinds of artworks can help reach beneath stereotypes and defensive structures to help people begin to empathize, even with those who have been enemies. The images here are of Heather Raffo in her play, Nine Parts of Desire, which has been here in the Boston area, so some of you may have seen it based on stories she collected from Iraqi women on all sides of the conflict, and Iraqi American women as well. So films, music, art installations are all used to support communities to do this kind of work, empathizing with the suffering of the other. Addressing injustice. I want to emphasize this because sometimes when people talk about reconciliation, they think, well, are you going to 
do justice or are you going to have reconciliation? And I, that, in my view, and our view as artists working in these regions, was that it's a completely false dichotomy. That there must be some sort of justice, some sort of justice. It may not be the retributive form that we're used to, but there have, but injustices must be addressed, and there has to be some sort of justice um, in order for there to be a moral framework on which to begin to, be, to base the trust. We can't move forward into the future with, with, with no sense of what we agree on as right and wrong. Um, on the right is um, an image of. Ana Correa of a group in Peru called, Rosa, uh, called uh, Grupo Cultural Yashkani performing a play called Rosa Cuchillo in which she depicts a mother who in her afterlife went searching in the underworld for her son who had been disappeared by the government during this, the uh, civil war there. In the underworld when she was visiting there she was able to find her son and to embrace him and say goodbye. And I feel that this is a kind of justice for the, for the mothers of the disappeared who watched this performance that could never be won in a court where you actually can feel this visceral last embrace of the child you were going to lose that you never had a chance to feel. Letting go of bitterness. This is what a lot of people think reconciliation is about, forgiveness. It is an element of reconciliation. Um, but in not all cases can forgiveness actually be achieved. Um, sometimes we need to find other ways to let go of bitterness and move on. It's a complicated work. Um, this image comes from the work of Casa Grande, a Chilean group that um, looks in literature and poetry and all around the world. And in a number of places where cities have been bombed, they develop this most powerful process of oral history and ritual where um, planes actually <coughs> enter the scene where the bombs, from the direction where the bombs were dropped, and what's dropped is poetry. This is Guernica in Spain, the place where the first um, first experience of weapons you know, being dropped from the weapons. And I did meet people there who experienced this and talked about it. It was very profound. New set of images for them to replace that, those memories of bombs being dropped. This here is a work, a, a mural that was created in Peru, uh, not Peru, El Salvador, <coughs> by an artist named, with, working with survivors of a massacre there named um, Claudia Bernardi. And you can see the images that people have here of imagining their future. This is what they work together through a democratic process to decide what to uh, perform, what, what to create together. So these are the seven elements of reconciliation. And I guess what I want to say in summary about reconciliation is it's huge work. It's a work I think that we as a species know really at the beginning, we know very little about it. We're at the beginning stages of it. And one of the reasons why the arts can contribute to it so well is that we are, when we engage with something through the arts, we're not stuck in the concepts that we have in our rational minds, but we can bring forward um, new, new ideas that we don't yet have language for.